number 31 of our study of the Bible. And today we're going to look at manuscript evidence. Serves to provide evidence that the Bible has been transmitted accurately through time. So this would be one of the questions is how do I know my King James Bible? Where did I mean did the King James Bible parachute down from heaven? Here we are. No, it didn't. Though it's from heaven. And there are two ways to debate the inerrancy of the Bible. And inerrancy means without error. One is canon. Canonicity is the rule or standard by which something is measured. So when you hear the word canon, the Roman Catholic canon, the Bible canon, and in the sense it's here, I have a ruler. See my ruler? This ruler tells me inches, a foot, and it has millimeters. And if I want to see how long something is, how broad something is, I would have to use my ruler. It is also used to make straight lines. So when we're looking at the Bible, we're looking at what is the measurement, what is the standard. That word is the canon. And again, the Catholic Church has ruled against in their devilish procedures that when you think of the word canon now, you know, the rules of the doctrines of the Catholic Church. No, 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 no. We're not talking about the Catholic Church. We're talking about the Bible and canon is the rule. The second is manuscript evidence. Now we looked at last time, there are two types of criticism. There's a higher criticism and a lower criticism. Now the higher criticism of the Bible is it deals with things like the date. When was King Solomon in his reign? When did the three times dates and times Nebuchadnezzar came into Jerusalem? When was Galatians written? Author. Who is the author of the first five books of the Bible? Who were the author of the individual Psalms? Who wrote Nehemiah? Who wrote the book of Romans? Geography. Well, what kind of realm, what kind of area was the wilderness? Where was Moses when he came to the burning bush? Where was Paul's missionary journey? And background, and it goes, etc. Lower, lower criticism, it deals with the actual text and the manuscript evidence, the words. There are 5,500, to the point when I wrote this, Greek manuscripts. There are 10,000 Latin manuscripts, and some estimate as high as 20,000. Now we got to look at what is a version. What's a version of a Bible? What does version mean? We throw about these Bible words, we throw them out there, but we don't know what the meanings are. Many who carry a King James Bible doesn't even know what the King James Bible is, where it came from. A version is into another language. If you were to take this report and put it in Spanish, it would be a Spanish version of our Bible report. And Polish or Italian. English is a version of the Greek text. It means it's going from another language. Now, 
the New Testament is in the Greek, but we brought it from the Greek to the English. We speak English. We don't speak Greek. I want to press one for English. The New American Standard is not a version of the English. The New International Version is not a version of the English. Vital to comprehend that the number one version used throughout the Christian world was Latin. Did you know that your English Bible comes from Latin? That was one of the languages that Pilate wrote, this is Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, written in Latin. Jerome translated the Latin Vulgate. Vulgate is a common language. The determination of the translation was not to repeat all the pains that were previously going on. The drive was to place it in the language of the people and not use the Latin of the Roman court. So, so Jerome wanted to take the Bible and put it in the common language for the people to read. It's named Latin Vulgate. Vulgate means common, for the common people. So when you get in the church and, and your, your seminaries, uh, in the Greek, it is, well, the people that are sitting in your congregation, the people that are sitting in your classroom don't speak Greek. They speak English. And we've gone through the, the men and women who stand up in the Greek. We, we've gone through this past study. I'm not going to repeat. The Bible has been wanting by the people, by God. To, we want the common people to read and understand. Many people did not understand the Latin, and that is the Latin was held over the people by the Catholic Church because you can't understand the language, so you come to us for the interpretation of what the Bible really says. And Jerome says, well, poppycock, why don't we just take the Bible and put it in their language so they can read? We had the quotations of the church fathers. We went through that again before. Patristic. I may be saying the word wrong, I apologize, but the word is the Latin word for pater, which means father. Church fathers. And again, that's not the Catholic Church. It's not the Catholic priest. It's just men, like we say, the founding fathers of America. Church fathers has separated references to quotations from the New Testament. And just a brief review, Church Fathers, Irenaeus, Polycarp, Clement, these men who existed in the second century were really born in the first. <laughs> Polycarp studied under the Apostle John. Irenaeus knew John, the Apostle. So there are a lot of close nearness to say, and from the quotings of the New Testament, would be noteworthy. Now we have the codex. Codex means book. I can grab this without making a mess. Impossible. This is a book. I don't even. It's a book. Okay. You would also say. Codex, a book. But Codex is a collection. We have Codex Alexandrius, Codex 
Codex Vaticanus and Codex Sinaiticus. Can't get that word out today. Be warned of the words of Alexandria, Egypt. Be warned of the words of Sinai. That was the law. And be warned of the words of Vatican. Or Vatican. That's Catholic. The printing press was invented 1450. And the very first book to be printed on the first ever printing press by Gutenberg was a German Bible. The Gutenberg Bible. So the, the, the foundation's running all the way back for the printing press that we have, the printing press of the media. We have the newspapers, we have magazines, and we have the junk. But they would be the last ones to tell you that their foundation of their printing press was a Bible that runs the family, not of the New Age versions, not of the New International, not of the New American, but of the King James of Antioch, family of the Bible. Martin Luther, he tracks... Martin Luther's 95 Theses on the Door of Wittenberg, 1517. These are in the history. These are in the Bible. Line. Of our King James Bible. The Council with uh, uh, the Roman Catholics of uh, Trent in 1540 fought Luther on the Apocrypha, which don't belong in the Bible. Luther said no. Catholics said yes. I ain't going to listen to the Catholic. So there are three basic traditions of the Greek manuscripts. Number one, the Byzantine, or the Eastern text. The Byzantine is a period of states from the Eastern Church whose capital was at Constantinople. Again, sorry with the mispronunciation of the words. The Greek Orthodox, the Russian Orthodox, these are all share of the tradition, the Eastern or Byzantine Church. They are Greek-oriented, they are Greek language, Greek spoken. Translate a Bible to many dialects in Russia and Armenian languages. The Byzantine tradition and they certainly don't hope in the room, in the boat. Antioch of Syria and churches all over. Turkey and Russia, Caspian and Baltic Seas area. All was recognized by the Byzantine text. Number two, we have the Western or Latin text. The Western text, for example, that was most often quoted by the church fathers. They are those who lived in the area. And third, we have the Alexandrian text. Warning. The modern text. The modern Bible. Egyptian tradition in Egypt in the Bible is a type of world. And God told his people, don't go back to Egypt. And when they did, they got in trouble. So when you take your Bibles, don't go back to Egypt. Or you're going to be in trouble. And encouraged by the church leader named Origen. And endorsed the modern times of Westcott and Hort. Those are two devilish names. If your Bible comes from Westcott and Hort, it comes from the flames of hell written by brimstone and sulfur. Their revision of the Greek text, which we have the Codex Sinaiticus and Codex Vaticanus. Sinai brought you under the law and Vaticanus brought you under the Pope. Alexandria is one of the three great cities of the Roman Empire. 
where great libraries of the world were. Alexandrian text in the traditional of the Egyptian education organization is that it was subject to a lot of heretics or heresy. It was subject by people who did not believe in the trinity of God. They did not believe in God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Which would give you to why was First John, the trinity, rewritten, omitted from the modern Bible. They denied the deity of Jesus. They said that Jesus is not God. That's your Westcott and Hort. That's your modern text. That's your Alexandrian. That's your Sanicanus. That's your Vaticanus. This is entirely problematic of the Arian argument. The text has become the basis of the Jehovah Witness, the New World Translation Bible, which omits Jesus as God. Manuscript evidence is that they are measured by geography. The Vatican favorite of the Latin text of Jerome's Locus Latin Vulgate, the, they favor the Latin over the Greek. Latin became throughout the dominant language of the Roman Empire in the first and three or four century. They still have the, the mass done in Latin in your Catholic churches all over the world. People don't understand Latin. Dark Ages was not the only collapse of the Rome in A.D. 476. It's where the term Pontifex comes. Maximus, which all Roman empires from, from Augustus, who was on the old activity empires, termed Pontius Maximus Supreme Pontin. That's what the Pope You had to burn incense to the most of the Roman centers of the empire saying, Caesar is Lord. I think the Jews said something like, we have no king but Caesar. As they crucified their king, their Messiah. You could follow any god you wanted in the Roman Empire, but ultimately you had to recognize Caesar as the number one god. You mean... Like the pharaohs were gods. Pharaohs were god leaders, god kings. Pharaohs were to say that God put that man in that office. Rome has a tendency to dominate, to be dominated by the Latin manuscripts. Three twenty-five A.D. is a revolving point. It started around three thirteen, but in three twenty-five A.D. we had the Council of Nicaea. We had the Emperor 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 Constantine, who resolves that Christianity is going to be the official religion of the Roman Empire. At the same time, Constantine's mother, whose name was Queen Helena, took a trip to the Holy Land. The strength in all of this launch construction plans, which still exist today in the Holy Land. You know, we're going to build up a religion of Rome. And Christianity. And you got that in the Baptist churches today, which I call ba Baptist Catholic churches. They're Baptist, but they got the Catholic celebrations. They have may have one or more of the Catholic church candles. 
the great high God that stands behind the pulpit. The ability to put Jesus in a box and take him out when you want. The Christ Mass or the Mary Christ Mass. Or the Roman holiday Esther. Esther. Easter. Some of the Baptist churches, Catholic Baptist churches, have the manuscripts of Codex Sinaiticus and Codex Vaticanus of their church fathers of Westcott and Hort. NIV. NASB. Good news. Hopefully, you've learned more language of the Bible, of the Bible that we have in our hands. Hopefully, you are learning. Next week, Lord willing, we'll look at Constantine. We'll pick up who Constantine is and the trouble that he caused. 